Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market. Today, it's Thursday, July 9th, 2020. This is your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. Find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to ChaikinAnalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email. Get a lot of the content for this show. Also gives you daily stock ideas to consider. Hit your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So let's dive in. U.S. equities were higher in Wednesday's trading. Tech, discretionary, and financials were the best performers. Materials, staples, and REITs lagged. Treasuries were little changed across the curve. The dollar was weaker on the major crosses. Gold was up 60 basis points at its highest level since September 2011. WTI crude uh, higher by 70 basis points despite a surprise inventory build. So we get to the desk here this morning. Futures are, it's a little bit more of a mixed bag. S&P futures are down about 20 basis points. NASDAQ futures are higher. This is after Asian markets were higher overnight with a focus on another rally in China. European markets are mostly higher. Germany is standout there. Treasuries are a little changed across the curve. Dollar kind of flat against the major crosses. Gold down 20 bips. WTI crude down 30 basis points to get us going on a Thursday morning where I have to wonder, is today the day for a breakthrough? I guess I'll be wondering that every day until it finally happens one way or the other, uh, because we keep knocking on the door, trying to close that gap, trying to close this gap. Not yet. Trying. Resistance has proven strong, but so is support. We've talked about it. I kind of feel like a broken record, but that's what it is. I'm not going to make it up, folks. Uh, the S&P 500, quite frankly, uh, is boring and has been boring uh, for about a month now. Uh, basically, ever since the excitement around Powell's speech back here, we've been in kind of a no man's land. And that's fine. That happens sometimes. Uh, I, I will argue over and over time and again, uh, stop looking at just the S&P 500. Do the real work. Drill down. Within this going nowhere fast, there are plenty of opportunities, right? both on the bullish side and the bearish side of the coin, what's leading, what's lagging, right? I realize that everybody uses the S&P, so we'll talk about it. To me, it's your trigger, right? Above 3,000, equity is still favorable, but where do you want to be in equities? You want to be in what's leading. We talk about what's leading, what's lagging all the time. Should 3,000 break, you have to start thinking about a move down to 2,850, and then who's leading, who's lagging in that environment, right? Right. Should 3,000 break, my bet is you want to start putting on bearish trades in the areas that are currently lagging. Resistance 3150, 3250. If we break out, you know what to do. Buy the mo. We are currently overbought in the near term. 13 period CCI above 100. Three day moving average ticking higher also. Right? If you have the Chaikin Analytics platform, you'll see that the overbought, oversold indicator is in an overbought position as chicken money flow continues to fade. So to me, you know, at this level, the burden of proof is on the bulls, right? Can the bulls push us through resistance? So far, they haven't been able to. Now the market's overbought, right? So to me, that's a, that's a data point against the bulls here in the near term, very near term, right? You see how sensitive this indicator can be, right? It, it, it shifts. Are we overbought or oversold within the context of the prevailing trend? Well, folks, the prevailing trend is flat. You can see a pretty flat 200-day moving average. Prevailing front trend is flat. So we're overbought within a flat trend. Got some stocks that look like laggards. If you have some stocks that you own that are hitting your risk management parameters, probably not a bad idea to get rid of them. Market in a minute. We touched on a lot of this already. The song remains the same for equities. Breath improved slightly on the week. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on the show. Commodities break above near-term resistance. This to me is some of the more some of the more interesting things happening in the market right now for me, in my opinion, are happening away from equities. They're happening in the commodity landscape where gold is trading as high as it's been since September 2011. Where silver, which we'll look at a little bit later on in the show, is on the verge of a breakout. Where copper's been trading strong. Let's look at a chart of lumber. Also fixed income. A lot of, uh, a lot of action potentially in the fixed income landscape. I, quite frankly, equities are boring right now. Uh, but that being said, that's what most people care about. And frankly, what we look at the most as well. Futures point to a mixed open today. From a power bar perspective, not a ton of change. Five to seven bulls to bear. So the Dow, after adding 70 basis points, S&P 500 up a like amount. 
96 to 109, Bulls to Bears there. NASDAQ outperforms. What else is old? 35 to 9, Bulls to Bears as the NASDAQ continues to lead. Because in a slowing growth world, folks, you own growth. Small caps were an inline performer, 508 to 315, Bulls to Bears there. Bonds down to extending yields higher. Tech, your leading group on the day. Information technology, uh, up 1.6%. 19 to 11, Bulls to Bears. You know how I feel about tech. Let's hit our stock of the day now. Sticking with this theme of Thursday being a day where I run a screen for everybody. Get a lot of good feedback here. Uh, so if you do not have uh, Chicken Analytics, which you should, for, take a 14-day trial, um, you don't have this screen. I, I, I put it in my note. Uh, for anyone else here, you want to take a look, take a snapshot, but you're not going to be able to replicate it beyond today. Uh, I'm looking at the Russell 3000 bearish and very bearish stocks that are – exhibiting weak money flow and weak relative strength, but are currently overbought within the context of a downtrend, right? So to me, with the market overbought within the context of a flat trend, I want to start thinking about, number one, do I own any of these stocks? If you do, I think you have to question why. Do you own Northrop Grumman, which we talked about yesterday as a bearish idea, and then watched it go down over 1% in a flat tape? What about Ulta? A lot of people, want, a lot of people like Ulta. I don't get it. And if you own it, Ask yourself why, but take a look at this list. Take a snapshot of the screen. Um, these to me are names there. If you own them, maybe a good idea to take some off the table. If you don't own them, might not be a bad idea to open up a bearish position. Some of these stocks. We talked about aerospace and defense. Here's HII, here's NOC, right? Buffett's been lagging. Look at his stock. Um, kind of interesting. Take a look at the screen. I'm going to leave it up there for one more second but, and to let you screenshot it, and it's gone. Take a look at our sector tracker now. Moving to the major sectors over the last five days. Tech where it should be at the top of the list. Communication services and discretionary, folks, there's your, there's your growth theme, right? Discretionary largely being Amazon, right? 25% of the S&P uh, 500 discretionary sector. Material staples, fins, middle of the road, healthcare industrials, utes, energy, and REITs at the bottom of the list. Taking a look now, though, right? You know how I feel about energy. Um, I'm not in love with financials. The banks are a mess uh, here and abroad, which is kind of interesting. I don't think enough people are paying attention uh, to how bad the banks look globally. Uh, utilities. A little surprised that they're not doing better. Uh, and real estate is something I'm watching closely because I'm looking for signs of inflation picking up. And if that's the case, you're going to want to own real estate. But you're going to have to be selective about it as always, right? I'm probably not going to want to own uh, real estate that's levered to some of, you know, to malls. Are you kidding me? What about assisted living facilities where, you know, COVID has been an issue? Probably don't want to own those either. Uh, so you're going to have to be selective. And, and you know what? Maybe in this downturn, real estate's not the place to look. Uh, taking a look at what the industry in focus now, home builder services, we've talked about this. Uh, slight underperformer past six months, but had a solid day yesterday. Uh, ratio, 12 to 3, bulls to bears, very strong, moved up two slots. Names you want to take a look at, Lennar, Taylor Morrison, and Cavco, all kind of moving up and out of consolidations. Take a look at the builders, which looks very similar as well, right? If the builders were a stock, we'd say it underwent a personality change. It does kind of look compelling. Now, in fairness, it looks very much like the S&P, but consolidating, overbought in the near term, so don't love it. Money flow mixed, right? Bullish, strong trend, strong, you know, above the rising long-term trend line, 12 bulls, three bears. Bullish fund, outperforming, mixed money flow. Weight of the evidence supports being bullish here. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to chase things right now. You know what? And if that means I'm buying the breakout, I'm fine with that too. Let's take a look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S and P 500 gainers and losers. Coles, KSS up nine and a half percent following an upgrade from Bank of America. Merrill Lynch, Twitter up on news of a potential launch of a subscription service. Uh, that was kind of interesting. Some folks doing some real research noticed that Twitter had a job posting 
uh, that led them that led people to believe that Twitter was going to launch a subscription service. That's the kind of real research that gets done out there, right? People build bots to scrape company websites uh, for things like patent filings or just or uh, job openings, right? That's the kind of real fundamental work that gets done out there. And we can piggyback off of that with our trend work and a quantitative model. Uh, Fortinet, FTNT, software was positive, up 5.5%. Royal, uh, up 5%. Uh, no real news there. Lenar, we talked about the builders. Mosaic, yeah, the loser side of the board, there's really nothing company specific other than for uh, Allstate, ALL down 4.5%. 7-8% as they announced that they are buying a business. The rest, nothing company specific. Mohawk did have some analyst comments, but from what I can see, the analyst comments were actually positive. Uh, so maybe something else in there to take four and three quarters percent out of the stock on the day. Let's dive into the charts. We do breath on Thursdays, as you know. And there was a slight improvement in breath this week, right? Percentage of stocks above the S&P, uh, in the S&P 500, above their respective 200 day moving averages. Uh, over 40%. So that's good. Still not great, right? Still don't have a majority, right? And remember, go back to the chart of the S&P that we spent time on. We said the trend is flat. So kind of lines up, right? We don't have a majority of stocks above their, above their long-term measures of trend being the 200-day moving average, right? Um, percentage of stocks above their 50-day, a little bit better, right? 63%, but ticking in here in the near term, right? So if I think of kind of 60% as healthy majority, we 50% being majority, uh, it's it's okay. It's good, not great, but that kind of lines up with the view. What you'd want to see as a bull, should the S&P 500 break through 3250 to the upside, you'd want to see confirmation from breath, right? You'd want to see these breaking to the upside as well. So, you know, kind of what you'd expect in a choppy consolidative market, right? Take a look at the advanced decline line, not really giving you a hint. What's interesting to me is that throughout a lot of 2019, the AD line broke out ahead of the market. So uh, that'd be something I'd look for. Don't see it here just yet. Uh, but breath is improved slightly on the week. But it's hard for me to get excited either way, uh, given what I'm seeing here right now. Commodities break near term. Now here's where we're going to dig into it because take a look. Break near term resistance is what I should have said there. Take a look at DBC, the Invesco DB Commodity Index. Uh, tracking fund. Now with any of these commodity funds, make sure you know what you own if you're going to go out and buy them. I'm just using this as kind of a representative sample of the asset class. And we can push back and talk about what's weighed and what's, you know, the weights of different commodities. Uh, but realistically speaking, as an asset class, this is an interesting trend, right? Bottom, double top, you know, double bottom, breakout, now breaking through resistance. This is interesting to me. Right, overbought, oversold here, 13 period CCI. Uh, neither overbought nor oversold at the near, in the near term. DBC, the one relative to SPY, this is the one that's intriguing, right? You have to squint to see it, but that line is rising. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to me what's playing out here. Kind of lines up with my view that we're on an inflection point as it relates to the potential for inflation, right? So what worries me is, you know, slowing growth, rising inflation, that's stagflation. Uh, I think 70s. Um, I wasn't around for that, thankfully, but I hear it wasn't a good time. Uh, but whatever it is, what it is, we don't get to pick our environment. We just have to operate within it. And what I see now are commodities working higher. And now all eyes are on gold, right? Gold, 1800. Gold, highest price in September 2011, right? Gold, gold, gold. And here's silver just kind of quietly saying, you know, I'm over here just doing my thing. Uh, breaking a downtrend line on the verge of a 52-week high. Take out the scooter up at 86. Getting close to overbought, but not quite there yet. 52 under cross. I don't put a lot of weight into that, but silver quietly making a move. I think it's worth your look here. It's going to wrap us up. Take us for that trial. Get that screen. Get my note every day. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.